Hello there, welcome to Umbercraft, and today we've got a new filter for you. And this filter was requested by Squirt Dude. It's called the um, Test for Block Range filter. And what this is going to do is it's going to let you select an area and have loads of Test for Block commands coming off it. It doesn't sound useful at first, but when you get further into it, it's actually extremely useful. But for now, let's show you some of the examples it can be used in. Here we have our super beacon, and with this we can put little blocks on top of it, and it will do certain things. For example, if we put glowstone on it, it turns it to day, put a cake on it, and our food has been filled up when it... Yep, there we go. And if we put the web on it, what's it going to do? It's going to clear the web, and it's going to give us slowness 2, which is lovely. So there we go, you could add sound effects in here. Uh, I haven't uh, in this version, but... There you go. Uh, most of the time this has a use in um, minigame maps, not always useful in um, adventure maps. There are some circumstances, I'll get into that. Uh, but for now let's look at some other examples. Uh, the test for block range a filter also generates... Um, this is what it generates by the way if you hadn't guessed already. Um, it will generate things that work off um, the coordinates that it's testing for. So for example with this, I can put a block down and zombies! So this could be an alternative to mob eggs if I don't know why you would need to use these instead of mob eggs but I don't know. Um, you could do this if there were only certain areas that you wanted people to spawn mobs in in a map for example. Um, but not always useful, but you could use it to summon other things like fireworks or other things. I don't know. Um, there will be updates coming for this um, that I'm planning to release soon. I'm going to do a video next week on a couple of updates on a few filters, um, which will enable it to have um, parameters in the coordinates of the output commands. Um, so basically, uh, in plain English, you put the block down and you'll be able to do things only within a certain radius of that block to people within a certain area of where you place that block. So basically with the range command and stuff. But that's all good. Uh, next example, this example is very useful in adventure maps. Um, this is going to be testing for an anvil and when the anvil reaches... Dung! There we go! You can have anvils breaking ice with this, which is pretty cool. Um, simply we've got a bunch of test 4 commands out here. They're all testing for an anvil on any of these spaces, and when it finds it, it's just going to get rid of all of the ice. It's going to use those command blocks which have a set block command in. Uh, I had to do that separately, that doesn't come with the filter. Uh, but in here, we have Lump of Root! So, we can chuck these around for absolutely no reason. And I'm going to go more in depth on the filter. To start with, you want to put a signal block in all the places where you're going to be testing for blocks. In this case, I'm using sponge because it's very easy to use and it's not used anywhere else, really, in many of the stuff I make. So I'm going to be using that. From there, I'm going to select all of the sponge, go to the filter, and where it says detect a location block, I'm going to put sponge in since that's the block which is the signifier. I'm going to select pink wool as the block to test for since I'm going to be spawning pigs on this grass. Next comes the checkbox called output command. If you're doing something like what I did with the anvil, do not tick this because in that case you're only going to be doing something if any of the uh, test for block commands are activated but the output command in the filter is only for something like the spawning of zombies or pigs because it uses the coordinates in the command. Because I'm going to be spawning pigs, I am going to take that checkbox and in the pre coords output command box, I'm going to put slash summon pig. Now, I don't need to put anything after the coordinate, so I'm just going to type NA there. After I place the pink wool, I want it to disappear, so I'm going to tick the delete block after placement option. Then all I need to do is run the filter, and it will give me a schematic file that I need to save. I'm going to save that, and then I'm going to import it, and then we're done. 
The structure that you import with the filter doesn't actually have any means of powering it, so you will have to make a clock or uh, some way of activation by making a clock here, but you could set up a scoreboard which tests if pink ball has been placed and then activate the test for commands via that. We're going to test if this has worked. This should have. I hope it has. Um, <laughs> but let's get the pink wool. There we go. Place it down. And... Yay! A piggy! Uh, this is getting rid of the grass, unfortunately, but oh well. But as you can see, we are spawning pigs. Enjoy the filter. There'll be a download link in the description below. And you can enjoy that. Um, update video on quite a lot of these filters next week. Um, but until then... If you liked the video, give it a like. If you loved it, why not subscribe? Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.